When Muhammad he claimed to be a prophet, what is the proof that Muhammad is a prophet? No proof. A prophet, if you will go and check the prophecies Muhammad he claimed, you will find that all those prophecies, prophecies is written after the prophecy happened. They are written more than 200 to 300 years after Muhammad. So how we can be sure that Muhammad he made a prophecy and the prophecy happened? So after I die, 300 years year later or 200 years later, you claim I said something, but there's no proof that I said that. You know, if you ask the Muslims about the book, it's called Al-Bukhari. Do you have even the book of Al-Bukhari? How many times we say Al-Bukhari is the most authentic book for the Muhammadan, right? But do you know that they don't have a single page of Al-Bukhari? They don't. All the books you see, it's called Al-Bukhari, have nothing to do with Al-Bukhari. Just to show you. It says, Sahih al-Bukhari. Okay, who is the one who wrote this book? They will say to you, but only the ignorant. They will say to you, Imam al-Bukhari, which is from Bukhara, which is not even an Arab. He doesn't speak Arabic. Suddenly, he is the one who can remember like endless numbers of, of, uh, of his stories about Muhammad word by word, letter by letter, which is impossible. It's impossible for any man anywhere in the world to remember all those stories. Then you ask them, okay, where is the book of Al-Bukhari? Can, can you tell us where we can find Al-Bukhari? They say to you that those hadith are reported from a student of the student of the student of Al-Bukhari. But a student of a student of Al-Bukhari? You don't have the book of Al-Bukhari. How you know that those are true stories? So everything they have, even the one it's called authentic, it's not exist. Like the Quran, the Quran itself is called what? They call it the book of Uthman, right? If you go and see that this is the most famous one, there's many copies of the Quran. If you go in page number one, it's page number A actually, not one. In the Arabic, Actually, in fact, it's not even called Quran, it's called Mus'haf. Mus'haf, which means pages. Not Quran. There is no Quran. In page A, it says, كُتِبَ هَذَا الْمُصْحَفُ الْكَرِيمُ وَضُبِطَ عَلَى مَا يُوَافِقُ رِوَايَةُ حَفْصُ بْنُ سُلَيْمَانِ ابن المغيرة الأسد الكوفي لقراءة عاصم ابن النجود الكوفي التابع عن 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 So, let me uh, translate a little bit. This is a book or this is a page is written according to the report or the tale of the recitation of Hafs. Who? Hafs. Was Hafs exist in the time of Muhammad? He was 200 years after. So according to Hafs, the son of Suleiman, the son of al maghira al-Asadi, al-Kufi, according to the reading of Asim bin Abi Nujud, according to, uh, from Abi Abdurrahman Abdullah ibn Habib al-Sulma, according to Uthman, according to Ali, according to Zayd, according to Ibn Kab, according to the Prophet. So where is the Quran? There is a Muslim, he made a video long time ago, and I don't know, he's a, he's a convert. They, he called himself Bilal. I'm sure you know him. He said, the Bible written according to John. John who? Luke who? Mark who? Matthew who? If we ask those Muslims, we know who is Mark, we know who is Luke, we know we know them. We know even the names of their fathers, we know we know where they are, we know which 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 city, we know everything about them. 
And now we know who's Hafs. Hafs, according to Muslims, is a thief. To the point he is not trustworthy, to the point Muslims don't accept any hadith from him. If I, right now, if I search for Hafs, he was a liar. Let me see if I can find it in English. And who is the one saying Hafs was a liar? The one who they copied the Quran from him, the Muslims. I found something else. I was looking for Hafs. You know, guys, Abu Huraira, the most one who, re, like the most famous man who report hadith of Muhammad, which supposedly Al Bukhari he copied from him. He kept saying Abu Huraira, Abu Huraira, Abu Dhar, Abu Huraira, Abu Dhar. Those are two trashy Arab homeless who accompany somebody for free food. I am sure you saw many of those people. There exists in our society always. Like if you are a person who, you know, generous and you have money, they accompany you wherever you go so you can have a free meal. Look what I found. This is, let us hear, this is the most authentic reporters of the hadith, the companion of the prophet, Abu Huraira, which means the father of the cats. Falsification of the tradition hadith. And obviously, we can read here the rest. I do not need to read it. But you will find millions of things in the hadith. It's so stupid. It's so silly. It's so dummy. And I was called Abu Huraira because of a small kitten used to play with. Different hadith. I was, uh, I used to train, uh, uh, train, train to hard, to herd. And I, ha I had a small kitten, uh, a kitten. When it was night time, I would place her on a tree. When it was morning, I would take her and play with her. So I was called Abu Huraira, man of the small kitten. So I mean, here that doing supposed to study about this guy, and they come to a conclusion that he is a big fat liar and he is, you know, he's not trustworthy. Uh, she used to let him work for her during the time of the Prophet. Then he married her. After that, when Marwan, between two brackets, Ibrahim al-Hakam, he used to let him to be uh, in charge of Medina during the time of Muawiyah in his, etc. Yeah. They are bashing the guy. Here you will see, uh, as I told you just a minute ago, I placed myself at the service of the daughter of Ghazwan in exchange for food for my stomach and for something to wear on my feet. Now, you see, when I say to you that Abu Huraira and those guys, they used to accompany Muhammad it's just for free food. Wherever Muhammad he goes, they go with him because wherever he goes, he gets free food. He's a prophet, remember, you know? So they, they accompany the guy just for the sake of a free accommodation. In the same time, those guys, they notice that now they are important because they can report what Muhammad said. So they keep reporting stories the Prophet said. So now they became like their job is to report what the Prophet said. So now they become a point of interest. And suddenly from people who they have nothing to do in life, no job, no work, no future, nothing. They accompany a guy just for the sake of food. Suddenly they become so important and they are a point of interest and all the light on them because they are the one who can tell you what the Prophet said. And they start saying things nobody heard. 
Abu Huraira say that's it. Abu Huraira, he must he's 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 a trustworthy. But how a person like this can be trustworthy? Uh, so I mean, this article is all about this. You know, if you want, I can share it with you. And the same for the rest. Uh, and now, you, if you ask yourself why they are attacking Abu Huraira, Abu Huraira is approved by Sunni in general. Is this approved by Shia? Unless Abu Huraira he says something good about Ali. If Abu Huraira he say good stuff about Ali, then Abu Huraira will be good for them. And here you notice that Muslims are dishonest. So they frame you, all of them. They frame the guy, they bully the guy, just because he is not saying good words about their man. If he says some hadith, they are good about Ali, then he is good. Are you with me? They are like Mimi Hijab. If somebody says to Mimi Hijab what you are doing is wrong, Mimi Hijab will start bullying you for the, forever. This is what you do with Muslims. Just tell him you are wrong. He will stack you. So Shia and Sunni are the same. They approve any person who go with their mood. Regardless if he is honest or he is trashy or he is truthful or not. Support what they say. They are good. You are good. But if you are good for them, you will be not good for others. And this is the case for all Muslims. So all, all of those, the article, let me pause the article for you in case you are interested to read. But always take into consideration too that those who they are making the article, they are liars too. You know what I mean? We cannot take, this is, this is an article written by Shia. We cannot take what they are saying to be accurate. They are liars too. Actually the Shia, they are big fat liars. Nobody lies as much as the Shia do. They beat the Sunni. So, you cannot take what Muslim Sunni they say, and you cannot take what Muslim Shia they say. In fact, there's a guy, he made a hundred video to refute me. A hundred video. 9999 of them is what? This guy in the hadith, his name is well known to be a liar. This hadith reported from this to this to this to this, and this guy is well known to be a liar. Therefore, the hadith is not accepted. Yeah, that's it. So even the Muslim Sunni, in order to refute an accusation against the Prophet, they are willing to accuse one of their good men to get away with it. So they themselves, the Muslim Sunni, they accuse even their good Sunni. They are good in their book. They accuse them to be a liar in order to get away with it. Like, you know, I, I posted for you here, the, the, the video I showed you here, I mean, sorry, the hadith about the sunset. You know? The Muslims will find uh, something wrong with the, with the reporter. They will look for anyone. It's not important for them to, to, to throw him in the bus. And they say, he is a liar. Therefore, this is not an against the Prophet. It can't be used. But as you see, this is Sahih Bukhari. This is the most authentic. Even the one that says Sahih, suddenly they say it's not Sahih. It says Sahih. It's not Sahih. It says in your book Sahih. So if you want to study Islamic sect, I say to you, don't waste your time because there are endless numbers of them. And the funny, actually, this is proof that Muhammad is a fraud. Why? Because Muhammad, he said, that his religion will be 73 sect but nobody can count how many Islamic sect there is I remember once a sheikh he said to me how you can explain to me if you have the right faith that Christianity is divided very much you have uh, Orthodox you have uh, Catholic you have a Protestant he said if your religion is true, then you will not have division. I said, okay, that's fine. This is your logic. I will go with it. I said, who is the most religion is divided? He said, the Christianity. I said, are you sure? He said, yeah, I'm sure. And then I got him busted, as you see. Muhammad, he said clearly that the most divided religion is Islam. Only one sect of the 73 sect in Islam, they will go to heaven. Only one. 